Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for uh, for being here. So this is joint work with uh, Andrea Pietra Caprina and Gepino Pucci from uh, from ASM University. And this story start with uh, a few questions which are asked by people, actually. So someone might ask, uh, will I get a loan? Someone might ask, uh, will I be hired? Or maybe we are in a medical context uh, and so diagnoses are involved. The thing is that people are involved and each person is different. In this case, they're all different colors. Therefore, we want to be fair in some sense. Actually, there are many and varied uh, different definitions of fairness that are possible. In this work, we are focusing on one that, um, in the sense that we focus on the outcome on the, of the process. So there is this notion of disparate impact uh, that basically states that people in different protected classes think uh, men and women uh, or people with blue hair and red hair uh, should not experience very different outcome from uh, a machine learning process in this case. And then you might think, okay, I will just ignore the protected attribute. Unfortunately, that, that is no solution because uh, th there are papers showing that ignoring the protected attributes does not help. Actually, it might be harmful. So we have to take into account uh, the protected attributes uh, of uh, the people we work with. Out of the several different problems you might consider for uh, fairness, uh, we focus here on clustering, specifically case center clustering. So in case center, you have uh, a pointer, which was working before. OK, fair enough. Uh, you have uh, a set of points in a metric space. And your task is to find uh, um, a set of centers, a set of k centers. In this case, we set k equals to 2. And those are the ones outlined with a black line. And then you want to assign points to these centers so that the radius is minimized, so that the maximum distance is minimized. Classically, thanks. Uh, usually, uh, you cluster points, you assign points to the closest possible center to minimize the radius. But maybe in this case, like in this case, you have two different groups. So there are blue people and orange people, or you can think men and women. With this assignment, you have one cluster only of men and one other cluster only of women. That might not be desirable. You might want to have a balance in each cluster. So you might want to have a situation such as this. Now, of course, the radius, it's worse, but we have more fairness because we are balancing uh, the number of people. So like this, oh, this fellow here, like the triangle up there, is assigned to the cluster at the far end just to ensure fairness. OK, so to make things more formal, we are working in the usual metric space uh, uh, with the um, distance function d. We have a set of points uh, s. And now each point is colored with one or actually more colors out of some set. And then we have the parameter k of the number of clusters we want. We want to find then a clustering, uh, which is very compact, uh, but also that has a good proportion of uh, points of each color in uh, each cluster. Uh, and the metric that we want to minimize is basically the radius that I outlined before. So it's the maximum distance of any point to its assigned center under the constraint that the fraction of colored points in, uh, of a given color in each cluster uh, is within some specified bounds. So to make an example, if you set alpha and beta both to 50%, then you want half the points of each color in each cluster if you are working with only two colors. There are several solutions to this problem. Um, most, of them go, most of them go by these lines. You first find the set of centers and you ignore fairness. And then you try to come up with a fair assignment of points to centers. The way you do this is by linear programming, because uh, the constraints can be formalized in a linear program. And then you solve it. Uh, and then you have to do relaxation, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. This gives you, uh, in most cases, a three approximation, because mm, the problem is, of course, NPR. 
Um, so this gives you a three approximation in the sequential setting. And there are also MapReduce and streaming algorithms when you have large amounts of data, where you, however, lose a little bit of the quality because uh, in MapReduce you get a nine approximation and in streaming you get a seven plus something approximation. Furthermore, linear programming is nice. It's almost magical, but it doesn't really scale to very large amounts of data because it, in the end it's uh, quite slow. And all of these uh, um, solutions have pretty large linear programs. So what we propose is uh, an algorithm which achieves a three plus epsilon approximation. So almost as good as the best uh, in the literature that works in all three settings. So both in the sequential setting and in the streaming and map reduce setting. Now I'm sparing you all the details uh, and the dependencies of the complexities, but the idea is that in the sequential setting, you are then linear in the input size uh, for the time. In streaming, you, you can do only two passes on the data and uh, um, the memory you use depends on the aspect ratio of the data set itself. And in MapReduce, you have a memory that basically scales nicely with the number of processors that you have. And the main idea of uh, our approach is to use uh, so-called corsets. And a corset is basically a small subset of the input equipped with a proxy function that basically assigns each point of the input to a representative and a weight function. So the corset points are weighted with the idea that each point of the input has a very close representative. So the corset is a good representation of the entire input. Then you solve the problem on the corset rather than on the original data set. Since the corset is much smaller than the input, then you can afford to use linear programming because you're working on a small subset. And so using less data, you are going much faster. So just to illustrate a little bit the, the idea, on the left hand side, you have uh, the input set of points, again, with uh, two different colors. The first step is to locate uh, a set uh, of proxy points. Let's see if I can do it now. No, my hand is not magic enough. Um, but let's assume that you start from an arbitrary point, like the topmost square. Then the, um, there is a greedy algorithm, a very classic greedy algorithm that basically requires you to pick an arbitrary point, then the farthest away, and then the farthest away from the selected ones, and so on and so forth, until you get either the desired number of clusters or a radius small enough. This is what we are doing. So we go on until we get clusters um, that are compact enough. And in this case, the clusters will, all, uh, the ones, will be all the ones outlined by the black line. At this point, the center of each cluster will become the representative of all the points in the cluster. And we will assign a weight to each point proportional, which records basically the number of points of each color that the corset point is representing. So now on the right hand side, we have basically just the corset points with the information about how many uh, original input points they are representing, stratified by color. Now that we compute this information, we throw it away and we just consider the location of points, ignoring uh, the weights for now. And we solve the k center problem. So we look for k clusters, in this case two, just to locate the position of, of the centers in the core set. And now in this case, it will be the two larger uh, circles. Now that we find, found the position of the centers, we bring back the information uh, of the weights and we try to distribute the weights of the corset between the two centers in this case, so that fairness is ensured. This is where the linear program uh, runs. Once we have distributed the weight uh, among corset points, then we go back to the original input and we assign the original input points to the uh, cluster centers, obtaining the final solution. So after all of this, the question is, is, of course, is this any good also in practice other than in theory? And the answer is yes, otherwise I wouldn't be here. Uh, and um, so these are a few of our experimental results in the sequential setting. I just want to highlight a couple of uh, things. So the 
teal line, so the bottom most uh, line, is uh, the performance of the unfair clustering algorithm. So without fairness constraint, just to, show, to see how much uh, utility you lose by imposing fairness. Uh, the other lines are uh, two baselines, like the red and the orange one, whereas the blue line is our own algorithm under two different corset sizes, because there is a trade-off. The larger the corset, the more accurate the representation, and vice versa, of course. Um, and what we can see is basically that we can get a very close um, solution in terms of quality compared to the state of the art, but in much less time. Like we gain always at least one order of magnitude. And on the leftmost uh, plot, this HMDA dataset has about 16 million points and the baselines uh, all timed out. And so we weren't able to compute the solution with the, with the baselines. And our running time is kind of comparable um, to the greedy, unfair algorithm. OK, I also have time to show the other uh, results on the other two platforms. So in the streaming setting, what we have, now I'm here I'm showing only the two largest data sets. And we are comparing uh, with the red baseline, which is uh, um, the baseline on the, on the streaming. On the x-axis, we have the memory used by the streaming algorithm. And basically, we can see that both uh, approaches are pretty close. And sorry, the dashed horizontal line is, for reference, the best performance achieved in the sequential setting. So both algorithms, if you look at the right hand side, get a comparable quality um, compared to the sequential baseline. But our approach in blue is much faster uh, at getting that quality. Uh, okay, and in MapReduce, we have something similar with a twist. So uh, if you look at the uh, left-hand side, there is basically the scalability plot with respect to the number of processors because we are in parallel in, uh, in MapReduce. Uh, and again, we are comparing against this red baseline. If you see, it's somehow odd because the red baseline has a running time which is increasing with the number of processors. But the shaded red area shows basically the time spent uh, both by the baseline and by us, the shaded blue area, in computing the solution on the aggregate uh, subset of, uh, of the input computed by the individual machines. And the thing is that the baseline has uh, um, to compute a linear program with a size that is larger and larger the more processors you use. Whereas with our approach, you can tailor the size of the final uh, linear program to take into account that you're using a large number of processors. And so you are able to actually make use of the parallel resources. OK, and uh, that would be it. That's the QR code for the, for the paper. And we have uh, code which is open source and available on GitHub. Thank you.